Tell us about the video we're about to see of the Trump crowds and the venom and crudity of their remarks. How did, did you record it? Um, were you surprised by the venom? Well, so I had been covering the Trump campaign with my colleague Ashley Parker, um, another reporter here. For She had been on it longer. She had been on since February. I'd only been on for about two months. But we noticed that there was like a normalization of things that were said that never we had never heard before as political reporters, like uh, racial epithets and curses and just anger. Um, and so we tried to figure out, you know, this is a story, we should write it. And then we thought, no, people need to see and hear this to actually experience what it's like. Um, but the way the Trump campaign works is that they keep you kind of penned in um, so that you can't wander the crowd during his actual speech. You're supposed to be, you know, writing at your laptops, you're not allowed to leave the pen. So we decided to trade on and off, and we would go in with the crowd as a general public and shoot the video. And as we were doing it, we were sending it back to Erica so she could take a, a little bit of a broader look at it. And I'll let you kind of pick up how that was coming in and how you saw it, I guess, come together. Uh, yeah, so, uh, well, although what's funny is that what I do remember at the beginning is that when you first approached me, um, you guys were asking me, how can we record this stuff so that when we write the article, yeah. if people <laughs> don't believe us, we have this backup just to show, you know, this really happened. And I said, well, I'll help you figure out how to do that. But if you're going to be recording stuff, we're going to make a video. We've got to do something with those recordings because that'll, you know, like Nick said, that'll be pretty powerful stuff. So they started filing stuff. And, and the first thing that I saw that I was just completely floored was um, the interaction where you see the older man say, um, Islam is not a religion, it's an ideology. Or he, sa or he says, Muslim is not a religion, it's an ideology. And there's that whole interaction between those people. There were some libertarians and okay. um, some, and that, when I saw that scene that he had shot, I just thought, okay, we have something big here. Okay, let's have a look at this. I feel he's the last chance we have to establish law and order and preserve the culture. 
that's where I grew up. So far, we're doing well, though, right? Have I been a good messenger? This is a movement like people have never seen before. It's extraordinary, the venom and the crudity of it. Um, were you taken aback by this? Yeah, and that's kind of what gave us the idea to do this. You know, we had, um, I had covered Ted Cruz earlier and then Bernie Sanders and a little bit of Chris Christie. Ashley covered Mitt Romney's campaign throughout 2012. And so we were both talking to each other and just kind of like blown away by it. But at the same time, when you're out at every rally and you hear these boos and these chants and these, you know, like hang, I, sh I can't say it on a, on a, It'll get bleeped out. But when, when you hear these things over and over and over again, they just start to become part of the regularity and, and part of the routine. And we realize that this isn't right, this isn't normal, and this is something we should shine a light on. And what do you, what do you think there is about the Trump campaign that gives rise to that venom and that crudity? Eric, do you, do you have a view on that? I think that what struck me most about it was... I don't, I don't know, I don't want to comment, you know, what Trump may or may not be trying to do, but it does seem to me that for some reason the rallies are sort of a safe space. I mean, I, I recently was, last week was uh, in Florida for a different story, and something that people kept saying to me was, it's so great to be around so many like-minded people who have a common goal. And, and they may or may not be they referring to... Were, they thought you were a Trump supporter. No, no, no. They, I was interviewing them. They knew I was a journalist, but this is what they were telling me, that they like being around so many like-minded people. And, and so taking that in, to answer the question that you, that you just asked, it seems to me that people felt comfortable expressing things. I don't, I don't think they got to the Trump rally and suddenly decided to say those things. This is people who may, had that kind of thing inside of them, and then they were in this public space that made them feel comfortable enough to say it out loud.